Today, we are starting our final push for Mobile, Alabama, and the completion of the river system we started in September in Chicago, Illinois. All the mysteries and unknowns of our river journey will soon be in our memories as we look forward to the next unknowns and new adventures ahead of us. We will break our trip into two videos, of which this is the first, which will take us from Aqua Yachts in Iuka, Mississippi, at mile marker 450, through to the Kingfisher Marina in Demopolis, Alabama, at mile marker 216. On our first day of travel, we left Aqua Yachts at 8.15 a.m., traveling just 32.5 miles to our first destination in Bay Springs Lake, arriving around 12.15 p.m. in a beautiful anchorage just above the Witten Lock. While this is an easy day, and we certainly could have gone farther, don't miss out on the beautiful anchorages in this lake, if possible. There are so many to choose from, we could have stayed a week and not experienced them all. During our second day of travel, we departed at 8.15 a.m. from the Witten Lock, arriving at Midway Marina at 12 20 p.m., where we stopped for an extra day to do some grocery shopping as well as connect with our boat buddies on Off Leash, who had arrived at Midway in advance of us. We'd not seen them since Paris Landing, so it was nice to catch up. We are in uh, Montgomery Lock, which is only about a 34 foot drop. This is the second of our three locks that we're going through for today on our arrival to Midway. This was a very short 19 mile day and rather uneventful. Today we had completed Witten, Montgomery and Rankin Locks, which are all quite close together. It's very doable to leave Aqua Yachts and go directly to Midway, but again, the locks will need to work in your favor and your cruising speed will influence this as well. Midway Marina is a very easy approach and had pump out and fuel available as well as a loaner vehicle. On our third day, joined by our friends on Off Leash, we traveled through the Fulton Lock, the Wilkins Lock, the Thad Cochran Lock, and the Aberdeen Lock. We faced some delays at a few of the locks and unfortunately, we had to anchor for almost two hours at one of them to wait for commercial traffic to get through. Resultantly, we put the pedal to the metal after the Aberdeen Lock to ensure that we arrived at the Columbus Marina before the sun set for the day. You do not want to be traversing the waterways in the dark. So if the timing does not work for you to go where you have planned, please implement plan B, C, or D, depending on how things have gone for you that day. Did I mention that you should have several planned destinations?
Columbus Marina has fuel, pump out, and a loaner vehicle that you can sign up to use during your stay. We were only here overnight, so we did not get to experience any of the town's features. On our fourth day of this portion of the Tentom, we left the Columbus Marina at 6.30 a.m. with a group of loopers and had no trouble getting through the Stennis Lock at mile marker 334.7 right away. This left two more planned locks, including the Tom Bevel lock at mile marker 306.8 and the Howell Heflin lock at mile marker 266. Our goal was to anchor just past the Heflin lock at the Oxbow anchorage, which is a very popular and safe anchorage. We called the Heflin Lock about an hour prior to our arrival, right around mile marker 276, only to discover that there would be around a three hour wait to get locked down, which would take us past sunset and we'd be trying to anchor in the dark. Not ideal. We had just passed the Cook's Bend anchorage at mile marker 277, and so we turned around and headed in for the night with fellow boaters on Off Leash, Rose Cottage and True North. After entering from the south end of Cook's Bend, we went all the way up the bend until we came to a little cottage community where we finally found around seven feet of depth, which was excellent for anchoring. Many other areas in this anchorage can be anywhere from 20 to 50 feet deep. During our stay, we took our dinghy on an explore and discovered that the depths are such that the entire loop can be traversed without issue. On our final day of travel on this portion of the Ten Tom, we left the Cook's Bend anchorage at 6.15 a.m., traversing through just the Howell Heflin Lock at mile marker 266, arriving at Demopolis at 2.20 p.m. What you're looking at now are the white cliffs of Epps, located along the Tom Bigby River in Epps, Alabama, near Demopolis. They are part of the Selma Chalk Formations, which were deposited at about the same time as England's famous White Cliffs of Dover. The Kingfisher Marina does have a loaner car and it is a nice, comfortable marina to stay at with laundry facilities, fuel, and pump out. <laughs> 